Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia and welcome to the Thursday edition of our live video. So, a lot of you, if you followed me on Instagram, were expecting a stinger today. Well, good news, I also was expecting a stinger today. It hasn't shown up yet, so uh, our hope is it'll still show up today and we'll talk to you about that car tomorrow. So, what we did is we've talked about, uh, we tried to get the Sorento in earlier this week and we actually changed our plans. The reason we're talking about Sorento today is because you cannot beat the deals on this Sorento. So, 0%, for 84 months is in addition to Kia making the first six months of your payments. And just as a little treat for you guys, this is a model that is brand new in its last model year, the 2020, this is the black edition. So we're gonna get the camera to focus properly on the black trim lines. Uh, if you're tuning into this video and you're not watching live, skip ahead to about the three minute mark and we'll get launched into things. We're just gonna let our audience build. But if you wanna know how to join us live, give me one second to show you how to do that. Also, don't mind Kevin over there. He's joining me today. He's going to be doing some painting in here. And uh, he's uh, been in a few of our videos there. So he's almost as popular as our teddy bear. All right, here we go. If you want to watch uh, our videos live, especially the Stinger video tomorrow, uh, go to Brantford Kia on YouTube. So just search for Brantford Kia. And when you refresh the page exactly at 2 o'clock, which is what we're doing right now, one of two things will happen. Either you will see the video here, which you will not. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this little videos tab right here. And when that happens, you will definitely see our live video link. So there's our live video. Okay. Kevin, there's been a suggestion to throw you in the trunk instead of Teddy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm more yeah. Kevin's about the same size. So yeah, Kevin's a little taller. All right. So. Okay. So now I've got the, the reason I did that is now what I can do is I can see some of your comments coming in over on my big screen over there. So this is a vehicle that I like quite a bit, but sometimes it's tougher to do videos on because it's not the latest and the greatest, but I chose one that is the latest and the greatest, so you'll bear with me as we do this. Welcome aboard, yabba dabba do. Now that's a fun comment. Got a few people on, it's good to see you back. All right, I'm hoping at some point today I can earn your, your likes to this video. So if I can earn your like, if there's something you like, just the fact that you like that we do this, that'd be great. Uh, also, if I can earn your subscription, that'd be great as well. So what we have in front of us, I said I was going to wait till the three minute mark for those that uh, joined after the fact. What we have today is probably one of our best family vehicles outside of a minivan. Um, it has a ton of space, it's got great value, and it's got some nice features on this particular model that has been updated for uh, the final model year of this vehicle. So sometimes this is a great time to buy cars. Uh, real quick, I wanna brag about a couple things. Um, of course, you guys all heard the Kia, well, maybe you didn't all hear, JD Power, uh, just announced their initial quality awards and for the sixth year in a row Kia is the top mainstream brand uh, So top initial quality brand for six years in a row now. So that's big news for our brand I checked with Tim this morning if you're looking for a great dealer to buy from uh, I always sort of have this in the background You may not know about this, but we were awarded in the past a prestigious Kia dealer Platinum prestige award and that is right here is the words on it right there as one of the most distinctive dealer recognition programs, Kia Platinum Prestige is awarded to the top performing three percentile dealers among the world. So that is what we are. And uh, just so you know that we're not letting our, we're not resting on our laurels. Tim checked this morning. Our sales team is top five in customer service in the country right now. So uh, we're doing our parts and we've got some great vehicles. So hopefully we can earn your business. We had a record month last month. So that has been nice. And the reason we had a record month is because of a vehicle like this. 84 months at 0% and Kia will make six months of your uh, payment. So talk to our sales team for all the details on that. Uh, not a whole ton of fine print in there. 84 months of 0% uh, financing and uh, also the uh, six months of Kia making your payment. So pretty cool deal. This black edition is an LX Plus model. So if you've looked at an LX Plus in the past, you may be really impressed with the LX Plus for 2020. It's got a lot of features that you probably didn't expect, certainly in that LX Plus uh, model line. And then this black edition kind of steps it up with essentially an appearance package. So what you have here is these great looking wheels. They are black wheels. They're not the graphite style wheels that we see otherwise. Uh, they are nice black rims. And uh, I love the look of them. A lot of people over here really love the look of them. They don't film well. So when I stand back, you won't be able to see them uh, as, as well. So one of the things that is different than the LX Plus is these are much larger wheels. These are the, these are the same size as you would have on the SX model. So. I'm going to say they're 19. Yes, they are 19. Bear with me. <laughs> Just as I was about to say that, I thought, oh, maybe they're not. They are 19-inch rims, so the same size as on the SX, but you get it in the LX Plus. So to me, 
kind of gives it this sports look, uh, sort of a sports version look. It's, there's no different suspension. It's not like we do our other sports vehicles like the uh, Forte GT, which is a true sporty version. It has totally different suspension in the rear end. It's got larger front brakes. Uh, that's not the case with this. It's just an appearance package, but it really does update the look and make it more modern. And uh, it adds to, I think, the look of this vehicle. So there we go. Somebody's writing in, specifically the EX model or maybe the black line. There we go. Let me read your comment there in a second there. All right, in addition to the black wheels, you have a black uh, roof rack here. One little thing about this roof rack, I'm a kayaker, a lot of you guys know that. I've mentioned that before in our live videos if you're one of our regulars. Uh, if you're a kayaker, you want uh, roof rails that spread a long ways and a lot of SUVs kind of start the roof rail behind here and it kind of comes back and you can't put your first bar till over here and then you've got shorter bars. You can pack bikes up there if you want, but if you're a kayaker, you want a nice big spread on the rails. And these rails are super aerodynamic. They're nice and low to the vehicle, but you can get the aftermarket rails, whether Thule, Yakima, you can get them through, uh, or Yakima, excuse me. You can get them through Kia, the, the Thule rails essentially. Um, but you can put your stuff and you can spread your bars out. So in addition to the being black, they're just practical overall. Does Kia, Braver Kia install rails or have someone they suggest? Uh, yeah, if you get the cross rails, we can throw them on for you. That's not a problem. Uh, you can buy them through us and we can throw them on. So no big deal. Uh, coming down here, you can see it is a oval exhaust there, single exhaust. Badging is still in the chrome and that makes some sense because there are still some chrome details on this car. So you've got the badging there in chrome, which matches the window trim and the door handles as well. So wheels, mirror caps. I don't know if I showed you the mirror caps, but here they are as well. Wheels, mirror caps, and roof rails are black, and the bigger difference is those larger wheels, which just look really sharp. So that's basically the updates to the LX Plus, but if you've shopped for an LX Plus, again, this body style has been around since the 2016 model year, and uh, a lot of things have changed since then. A lot of things have been updated. The LX Plus never used to have a big screen like this, so we're gonna talk about that. We'll launch with the technology. If you wanna see trunk space, seating space, I'll jump in the, every row of seats in this video. And uh, we're going to take all of your questions till about uh, 30 minute mark. At that point, if you have any other thing, questions where we go off topic, uh, we'll ha be happy to do that as well. Maybe we'll keep it to the 25 minute mark today. But you can ask your questions throughout and I'll try to answer them throughout. So let me see, where did I put the key? I had someone else back it in here, so it's probably in the car. There we go, it is. Before I get too much into this, I am going to show you the key. And because I had someone else back it in here, I'm going to adjust the seat to where I would have it. As I move to the different seats, you'll see how much space you have. All right. Here's what the key looks like. Simple key, a key, you've got all the buttons you need. Now, on this particular model, when you hold this trunk button, all that does is unlock only the trunk. Uh, in other models, when you hold that button, it does have a powered lift gate. On this particular one in the bay right now, it doesn't have that. So that's why the key says the same, and sometimes it's confusing for people. They say it says hold, all it does is unlock. So we'll have that with us in a minute. I'm not gonna start the car because Kevin's in the room and I don't wanna gas him out too much. When we have electric vehicles, we can start the car up, but of course, on these vehicles, we can't. So what I've done is I've got, uh, I'm gonna turn the fan down here. I've got uh, some warning lights on because it's just to set to the on position. Fuel economy, don't worry about the 99.7 average. This car has been idling and obviously it's been reset. Uh, we just tried to cool it down before we started our video. And uh, so that is nowhere near typical. You've got a V6 uh, engine here. There's a four cylinder and V6 available in the Sorento. Of course, the four-cylinder does have better mileage, but if you start loading up the vehicle, uh, the V6 is pretty close in real-world mileage. So if you are someone who carries a little bit of weight, the four-cylinder can tow up to 2,000 pounds, but I recommend the V6 with any towing, uh, especially if it's anything other than a utility trailer, the V6 can tow up to 5,000 pounds. So that's a big thing here. One thing I like about the display here, I'll see if I can zoom in. Let me see, there we go. I'm gonna try to, let me see if I can do this correctly. There we go. There is a menu there for all-wheel drive. So the all-wheel drive system on this vehicle is top-notch. It's predictive, uh, not reactive. Basically what it means is when you start this vehicle, those are little bar graphs and 50% of the torque can be moved to the rear wheels. As I accelerate, those bar graphs will fill in with red bars showing you which wheel is getting which traction. It will start off in all-wheel drive and move towards front-wheel drive where a lot of competitors start in front-wheel drive and then if they slip, they move to uh, all-wheel drive. And the problem with that is, if your front wheels have lost traction and are slipping, giving the rear wheels traction can often push you further off course. Uh, so this is a way better system. It's called uh, Dynamax All-Wheel Drive, designed by Magna International, which is a Canadian company. It's designed for Canadian winters. And in the 2020 models, you can see your all-wheel drive system at work from the driver's seat instead of just feeling it. So you know where you've got traction and where you don't. 
Kevin, it was a mistake for me to sit in this car. It is very warm in here. All right. A couple little things. Automatic headlights, something you would expect. Steering wheel controls. You've got your Bluetooth controls over on this side and your audio controls. On the far right side here, you've got your cruise control on the far right. And this system of controls right here controls that display that I was just showing you right there. Moving across over here, when I mentioned the 2016 model, you didn't have something like this. Throw the car in reverse and you've got a huge backup camera. Also a very clear backup camera. When you're filming a screen, you can never have the full clarity, but you can see all the lines in the floor there. And uh, this is a nice clear backup camera. Makes it safer for a little bit taller vehicle. You can see directly behind the vehicle, especially for a family vehicle. You can see if your kid's toys have been left behind. Uh, I've been known to drive over a scooter or so uh, without a backup camera in my house. And I've never done that with a backup camera. So uh, there's my advocacy for that. Quiet mode is an interesting thing that moved to this vehicle from the Telluride and nobody talks about it. So I'm going to hit that for you for a second. Let's just turn on the radio now. I'm inside a building where there is not um, good radio signal. This is sort of radio um, protected. But we'll turn it on. We'll turn the volume up to number nine or so. Watch what happens when I hit quiet mode. Hit the quiet mode. Turn it on. What it did is it decreased the volume to seven. I'm just going to turn it down overall. It decreased the volume in the front speakers to seven and it turned off the rear speakers. So why is that good? One, if you have kids that are sleeping in the back, sure, that's good. Why I like it is if you have kids that are maybe teenagers and they wanna to listen to their own music uh, through their iPods or whatever else they've got, their own device in their earphones, they can listen to their earphones without having to listen to your music. You can listen to your music out front. So that is new in the Sorento. Uh, something that a lot of people don't know about. I moved it over here to this uh, menu here because I think it's something that uh, people could see and it's maybe better than some of the other menus in there. Coming down here, automatic climate control. Again, in an LX Plus, this is not something that was always around. So you can see somebody set it to low and that's fine. I'm gonna bring it to 19 degrees and let's say my passenger is too cold. We're gonna bring them to 20 and a half degrees Celsius. Uh, dual zone temperature co control is great. You also have a rear AC unit. So a rear air conditioner to give you extra cooling. So just like a minivan, this is a larger vehicle, you get that extra cooling in here. In the winter, rump roasters, three levels of heated seats, which are going to turn off immediately because I don't need those. Heated steering wheel as well. And of course, passenger also has a heated uh, uh, front seat. Throw the car into drive just to get it out of the way of the camera. This opens up and wireless phone charging. Now that is a huge deal. I My car has this and I never really thought how big of a deal this was, but of course all of our phones, if you're like me, you're a heavy phone user, uh, they always run dead throughout the day. Every time you drive anywhere, you put a little bit of charge back in, you'll find that your phone is way more charged than it ever used to be. Um, almost never, I never have issues with running out of battery because I just drop it in there and uh, yeah, your phone just charges instantly. If you want to connect other devices, you got two 12 volt ports. And if you connect to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which this car has, you connect the USB through there. You can hide all your cord and everything else through there. And now you're bringing navigation to this big screen through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. I like to use Google Maps. A lot of you like to use Waze. The big point is five years from now, if there's an entirely new mapping app that takes over the world and is the best one ever, you'll be able to use it because Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will be able to bring it towards uh, your, your screen here. You also get um, streaming music services. Uh, you get uh, text by voice, a lot of voice type operation of all of your, or many of your apps. Moves up to here, keeps you legal and keeps you safer, which is a nice feature there. One thing I didn't mention, the transmission. Again, if you're comparing this to a 2016 Sorento, you may not notice that this transmission is now an eight speed transmission instead of a six speed. When you top it, tap it like that, you can shift your own gears manually. If you're towing a trailer and choosing your own gears, that's a super helpful thing. In addition to that, you have drive modes, but not the same drive modes you used to have. You used to have Comfort, Eco, and Sport. Uh, eco, Normal, and Sport is what they used to call it. Now they call Comfort, Eco, and Sport. Uh, my friend Tebow fan, he's one of our regulars, uh, probably not watching today. He always wants me to talk about Comfort. He loves Comfort because he says it's very smooth for him. Eco will dull the throttle, uh, keep your transmission from downshifting as much as possible. And uh, you can see it over here. Let me just show you. I'll zoom in again. There we go. So drive mode, Comfort, Eco, and Sport, and Smart. So Comfort, again, uh, very smooth drive. Eco keeps it dull, uh, the throttle dull, the transmission resists upshifting, and, or sorry, downshifting, and uh, we'll keep it in uh, uh, efficient gear. Sport does the opposite, keeps you in the power band, downshifts early, great for towing, and Smart is what I use for 
what I recommend for probably 95% of people's driving. Smart gives you all the benefits of eco with none of the downfalls. Uh, and when you want to give it the gas, the car's not going to resist downshifting. It's going to it's going to downshift for you. And that smart mode is new with this transmission, and that makes a huge difference to give you great fuel efficiency, but also great drivability. It's the mode that I recommend to just about everybody. And again, that's right here. Which is best for lead foot? You got it, sport mode. But don't uh, don't rule out smart mode because smart mode will save you fuel while still giving you good lead foot. So that's what that is. This button here causes a lot of confusion. So I'll just cover it real quickly. Uh, the all-wheel drive system is always active on this car. For 90% of people, 99% uh, of people, I recommend letting the car figure out what to do on its own. What this does is it locks all four wheels at the same speed. So I'll show you the green light in here. When you look at that, turn it off, turn it on. Now, when all four wheels are at the exact same speed, you will have some driveline binding if you turn your... Um, steering wheel because the front wheels take a little different arc than the rear wheels so it will disengage if the steering wheels if the steering is too sharp it will disengage over i believe 40 kilometers an hour it might be 30 but over 40 kilometers an hour it will disengage the point is if you're stuck in snow and you want all four wheels to move together you do have some manual control to do that i find you don't ever have to use that because the system is so smart it figures itself out anyways all right kevin i have now sweat through my shirt kevin's uh kevin and i are enjoying because this room is very air conditioned until I brought this car in, and this car is still very hot. I like to bring them in a half an hour early. One other thing I didn't mention, that uh, blind spot detection there, that is in this uh, Black Edition LX Plus. You can see there, that light will light up orange, and of course it warns people if they're in your blind spot. The same system, so how does that work? That system has a radar system right here, in this area here, somewhere in that area. And what that does is if I'm walking across or driving across, the back of this car, the driver will be warned that someone is crossing their path. It has rear cross traffic alert. So every Kia that has blind spot detection, which is what you can see in the mirror, will also have rear cross traffic alert. And my argument is rear cross traffic alert is probably a bigger safety feature than even the blind spot detection. Uh, a lot of blind spot detection stuff, people are still paying attention. They see you coming into their lane. Whereas uh, rear cross traffic alert, someone could be walking across from myself towards Kevin there and not paying attention to a vehicle backing out, uh, you will be warned before you get to them. And it works for pedestrians as well as vehicles. And it works very, very well. All right, so there's the general overview of the outside, the inside. I am gonna pop the trunk here. I have my teddy bear. Those of you that uh, are maybe new for the first time, why does he have a teddy bear in the room? And maybe you saw it over there. Teddy bear over there, looking sad, is my trunk measurement tool. Now you'll see right now, I've got one seat up and one seat down. We're gonna show you this in a second. I probably should have put the other seat up, the other seat down, but uh, I've got some floor mats in there as well. I'm gonna show you how much space you have and I'm gonna do that using my teddy bear. This is a better tool when I have multiple cars in the same room. You can sort of see comp one compared to the other. Teddy measurement tool, TMT, yeah, exactly. We've been trying to name Teddy for a while. So when I put Teddy in here, usually what I do is I lay him sideways. You can see he's about five feet tall. Um, he's a little squished up, but uh, so he's certainly hanging out the back. But there's a lot of space in here. I'm gonna fold this seat down. I'll put it back up in a minute. Give me one second. I need two hands. There we go. Okay, so when I fold the seats down, we'll put Teddy the way we always put them. Those middle row seats, they do move forward. They do tilt quite a bit, actually. So they are in a sort of a standard seating position. You could create a little bit more space cargo-wise, or you could make it less space and more comfort. The thing with Teddy, though, is he's got a ton of space. I mean, a lot of you know that if I stick him in a Kia Soul, from there to there is pretty much the end of the trunk. Seltos is about here. Um, Sportage is about here. The Sorento is all the way back to here. You get a lot more space in the Sorento. And you have a little bit of underfloor storage over here. If it was a five, uh, some of the uh, five passenger models had underfloor storage here. This is a seven passenger model, so I've got those seats that I will show you in, a get in one second. So we're gonna put Teddy up over here. Oh, I should also point out those vents right there and this control over here, control that rear air conditioning. So if you have people in the back and you're maybe freezing them out because you're not paying attention, they can control the fan speed themselves and uh, turn it on or off. Uh, so you can turn it on and allow them to control some of that speed in their own control. If you wanna put the middle row seats down, you have handles right there, so you can put that one in. It's got some plastic, shipping plastic on there still. That's why it's a little shiny. Left hand is over on here, same type of thing. So you can fold all those seats down. What I am gonna do is switch these car mats over. We're gonna take Teddy out of here again. I do wanna show you headroom in all the seats, uh, not just a couple of them. 
So we'll just put this up. You can see how easy this is gonna be. I'm gonna pull right here, and that seat's a little reclined, so it rubs. Still got the shipping plastic on here as well. Take that off for a second. We'll throw that in the corner and like, uh, we'll blame the mess on Kevin. And there we go. So you've got trunk space still that's usable, but not nearly as much, of course, with the seven seat uh, vehicles. So if you need seven passengers, I recommend the Telluride or the Sedona if you're always taking seven passengers. If you need jump seats in the back that you're gonna take some people around reg every now and then, or you, know, you don't always use the back seats, the Sorrento's fine. Now, how fine is it? How good is it? Let's go take a look and see what I mean. They're not really jump seats, as I call them, but they are, uh, they are uh, smaller than the middle row here. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, hit this button, just like the Telluride here. And that moves the seat forward like that. I'm gonna climb into the back seat. Okay, I'm gonna leave that seat forward just because I've got one hand on the camera and I don't wanna mess it up. And I think I can prove my point here without doing that. So real quickly, if you look at my knees, my knees are, my feet are behind and they do fit underneath these seats right here. Uh, no problem there. So you even size 11 feet like mine, they fit. Uh, not with work boots. My knees are not on the seat. So they're not on the seat bottom. The seat bottom is short, but I do fit in here. I'm about six feet tall, uh, seat at a comfortable position, rolled back. Now again, these seats can slide forward and they can also tilt forward. So I'm comfortable in here. Uh, there's no video of the Sorento LX Plus four cylinder. Actually, we do have a video of that, but I'll link it uh, to you later. Uh, if you search for Sorento, we'll, we'll find one for you. Okay, I'm in the third row. Again, six feet tall. Let me go to the side here. Whoop, come on camera, doesn't like me. I'm gonna switch hands. Oh, you can see the sweat on my face. Won't show you my shirt. Anyways, you can see if I lean back, I do touch the wall. But when I sit comfortably up here, I have enough room for six feet. Could I ride in here for an hour? Yes. Could I ride in here for three hours? Probably not, not comfortably. Uh, so that's why I say great seats to have for a little bit of space, but don't, uh, if you need seven seats all the time for a full size person, probably not the best. All right, let me jump out of here. I'm gonna put this seat back and I'm gonna leave that where it is. You can see that is fully forward like this and it's fully upright. That shows you maximum trunk space. We'll just pop the trunk again one more time for you. And we'll put this one down. There we go. Now you can see the difference between maybe a comfortable spot here uh, and having full cargo space with that being fully upright. Here's the difference in space looking this way. There you go, quite a bit of space that way. Uh, where's the video said, sorry? I'll have to find that video for you later. Somebody looking for the LX Plus. Uh, while I'm doing the live video, I can't link it, but I can link it in the description when this video is done and uh, you'll be able to help out. Or you can just send me an email, uh, peter at brantfordkia.ca and I will link a video back to you. Peter at brantfordkia.ca. All right, now I'm gonna hop in the middle row seat. You can see that seat is fully forward. So we're gonna put this one fully back, which it now is. Yep, it always was, there we go. And I'm gonna put this seat if I can do this correctly, all the way back as well. Look at the difference between fully upright and fully back. There's upright and there is back. This is way too reclined to be actually comfortable for me, but I'll show you. I'm almost sleeping back here. I'm always laying down. There's Teddy over there. I'm laying back way, way too far. So I'm gonna put this where I'm comfortable and you can see headroom is not an issue when I do this. But if I put it where I'm comfortable, there you go, that's a comfortable spot. Now the big difference is headroom, I've got tons of it still, like quite a bit. Again, I'm six feet tall. Legroom, this seat is tilted a little further back than I would need, and I've still got tons of space, and it's also in its lowest position. I did that to show headroom, and we'll show you how much headroom you can lose, in other words, how much height you can gain when I get to the front seat. But you can see tons of space here for a six footer. You've got ports back here, 12 volt and a USB port. So this one's USB, and the other one's a 12 volt port and you've got vents back here. You've got pockets in both doors here, soft touch armrests everywhere. The center seat has armrests with uh, cup holders in it as well, which I will try to show you right now. Right over, whoops, come on camera, there we go. Armrests and cup holders in there. So you've got a lot of comfort space, a lot of uh, practical space in here. And again, I fit easily. So five people in this car are very comfortable, even if they're six footers, and tons of space. The ability to move that seat forward back and tilt it quite a bit. Uh, road trip car, this is a great car. Now, we mentioned headroom in the front. The seat is fully down and it is 
leaned a little too far back for me, but I can show you that if you're a larger person. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna go all the way back because let's pretend you're a little taller than me. If I go back to here, I'm six feet. I can't touch the pedals, even tippy toe. I can barely touch them. So if you're really tall, I mean, how much is that? Six, eight inches or more? Um, and I can barely touch the pedals if you look at my feet here, which everybody loves to do. I need to get better shoes if I'm gonna show my feet on camera. I can just touch it, I can't floor it, I can't break enough, uh, but there we go, that's six feet. Now, we showed you all that space, remember that space with my head, because now I'm moving the seat forward a little bit, and I'm gonna move it up a lot. We're just gonna move it as big up, as high up as we can go, we'll show you what we're doing. I'm already sort of halfway there. Still rising, still rising, still rising, still rising, and now I've stopped. And again, I would move a little forward, my head's basically on the ceiling. Even when I want to go full height as a six footer, when I put the feet where I'm comfortable, I've still got a little bit of headroom there. So you can move it really high, but also if you're a shorter person, and I always sort of forget to show the shorter people view, um, this is a lot, of, uh, a lot of adjustment here. And you have a tilt telescopic wheel. So my legs are still not on that wheel, but if I put it down, pull it forward, there we go. It's right down to my legs almost just finger widths in there, and it can move a long ways up, so a full fist up there, and it can move a long ways in if you wanna stay away from that airbag because you have shorter legs. So a lot of adjustment to fit lots of different drivers. Uh, the Sorento's perfect for sharing a vehicle with. All right, so we are at 26 minutes. We're gonna see your questions. Uh, I know there's a few of them came in that I missed, so let me just jump to them. Let me just see here. I always like the point, you mentioned door extensions. Oh yeah, okay, so one thing I didn't mention, so um, the Sorento has a cool feature that, uh, memory seats for multiple drivers, great question, Aaron. So no, not on this trim level, but yes on the Sorento. So EX and above have that, this is an LX Plus and it doesn't have that. One thing I always mention with this car and the Telluride, in a taller vehicle, what happens when you get out, especially as shorter people get out, they tend to get out with their legs and their legs brush against the side of the vehicle, which is not a big deal. Um, but it is a big deal if you live in Canada because there's a lot of salt and dirt and other stuff that sit here on the door sill. Now, look what we do to solve that problem with this car. Shut the door down here. That whole door wraps around that section there and it's sealed. And you'll notice that seal has some dirt on it. And so does the car down to about here. That's all the seal that's on the dirt. It covers right around. So this is an area where if you get out of the car and you brush your pant leg against the car, it's completely clean. So that is kind of a smart thing. Uh, they do it on our taller vehicles like the Sorento and the Telluride, and it makes a ton of sense because you don't end up with dirty pant legs. And you will be amazed if you start walking in an office environment, how many people have dirty pant legs from exactly that reason in the winter. So somebody just asked one question. Uh, would, would this be more related to the minivan? So same engine as our Sedona. Uh, that's a big difference. Uh, or big similarity there. I always sort of think that people tend to, price-wise and everything else, they go minivan or Sorento. Telluride would be a more luxury step up, so it is a little bit bigger. Telluride has eight passengers, so does our Sedona. Uh, so great question. A lot of people do compare this to the minivan. The difference is, although you have the same engine and transmission, this one can tow 5,000 pounds with that engine transmission, whereas the Sedona can only tow 3,500 pounds. So you gain interior space, you lose some towing and practicality, towing capabilities that way. Uh, just depends on what you're looking for. They do drive a little bit differently, but again, uh, that, and this one of course has the all wheel drive. So if you want that. Welcome back today, I wanna be, <laughs> oh, the connection was bad. I'm sorry, the connection was bad. All right, I'm gonna show you the lighting and then we're gonna probably wrap this video up. Tomorrow we are expecting the Stinger. Uh, many of you are wondering about the uh, upcoming Sorento. It is in the works. It could be here as late as January. It is delayed compared to what we thought. So uh, at the 30 minute mark, we'll go off topic. We're just about there. But before we get there, I'm just gonna show you the lighting. Car's beeping at me. All right, it's not showing up perfectly on camera, but let's see if we can get some light. There we go. This LED light is a sort of signature uh, light on this vehicle. This particular one has the nice sharp cutoff projector beam headlights, but they are halogen lights. And they're the same thing with the projector cutoff uh, sharp cutoff beams for the high beam. So high beam, low beam, separate lights there. Nice clean grill. This has been updated again since the 2016 uh, model. I believe in 2019 they upgraded that grill. That's when they added the uh, eight speed transmission as well. Looks very similar to most people, but to a Kia nerd like me, you'll notice that's a difference. Again, we'll show you those black edition wheels right here. 
And uh, yeah, somebody else is pointing out again, six, six months of Kia making your payments. Uh, oh, and just uh, so all Sorrentos, to the best of my knowledge, all Sorrentos right now are six months uh, of Kia making your payments and 0% for 84 months. Uh, there is a little bit of limited, a limited availability of these right now. Uh, some of the dealers have sold out quite a few. Uh, we've gone, we sold, we had a huge record month last month and sold out a bunch of Sorrentos. So I'm going to credit the videos. And uh, somebody's asking about the e Nero. We'll get to that in a minute. That'll be an off topic thing we can touch on. Here's the rear lights. Again, they were updated around 2019 as well. A lot of more detail in these lights. Some of the other manufacturers uh, don't think to put some of that cool styling in there and they just look a little bit more expensive at night. All right, I'm gonna jump over to the question, see if there's any more questions about this vehicle, and then I'll answer some of your off-topic questions. Do all the different models have different update intervals? Yes, um, short answer is yes. We never introduced two vehicles at the exact same time. So for 2020, the Soul came out as a 2020 model, which actually came out in 2019. Uh, 2021 Seltos is already out. Uh, the Optima is gonna be the next replacement, which is gonna be called the K5, probably looking around Christmas time, fourth quarter anyways, for that one. Sorrento will be just after that. Sedona will be sometime way after that. Uh, Sedona is probably another year away. But this is our, uh, this was going to be our next model, but it sounds like some production delays with this COVID stuff. It looks like we'll get the K5, which is the Optima replacement first. All right, uh, 2021, okay, I think I answered that. When is the 21, 2021 Sorento coming out? So again, K5, the Optima replacement will come out first. That's fourth quarter in Canada. I know in the States, they've already done a lot of marketing material on that. I don't have Canadian data. I spoke to head office about that Canadian data today. Uh, they're gonna see if they can get it to me as soon as they can, but right now they're not ready to release anything officially. So I don't have any information on that K5. The Sorrento, same idea. It's going to come out after that K5, so after the Optima replacement. So if, if we're getting the K5 in fourth quarter, the Sorrento is going to be just after that, which will make for an exciting fall around here. And uh, so that's the information that I have here. Uh, can I buy an e Nero if I don't live in a province that sells an e Nero? Walter, if you want to reach out to us, if you're in Canada and you want to buy a Nero EV, that's what we call it in Canada, if you want to buy a Nero EV in Canada, we'd be happy to help you out. So just reach out to us, connect with our sales team, mention you're out of province, and we can work with you on that. That's not a problem. Okay, what else we got? Let me know about my question at 217. So near end gen, you asked your question at 217. I can't go back by time. But if you let me know, oh, black edition is really good. However, on this, how much of an impact is without the solar glass windshield? Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so I believe the windshield is solar glass. There is a, um, a thicker glass in some of the upper trim levels of Sorento. So keep in mind where the Sorento competes. The four cylinder Sorento, even though it's a midsize SUV, price wise competes with a lot of our competitors, small SUVs. So you get more space, you still have four cylinder efficiency, but you get that. In those models, they have a little bit uh, thinner front glass. This is the same thing you would expect in every, every other uh, uh, small compact crossover. As they move up market, the SX Sorento has thicker windshield, sound reducing windshield, and a sound reducing side front windows. Uh, that's because then when you get to that price range and that class, they start competing with luxury SUVs. So you'll notice there's a little bit of redu reduction in uh, sound quality or sound levels in the higher trim levels. So. There's no real um, downfall. There's, I don't think there's any real solar. It, they all get hot inside, trust me. It's uh, crazy hot right now. Um, but there is a little bit of sound deadening in those extra glass, uh, the extra glass. So if you're reading through the brochure and you're wondering what that is, it's more about sound deadening than anything solar. Uh, where else we got? Specifically EX model or maybe the black line. You're asking about the zero. Yeah, I think we covered that. Uh, we'll install the roof rails. <laughs> right. I think I covered all your questions. Uh, off topic, does Kia can't have access to stylized K logo badges that are used on the same Korean car? So yeah, a lot of people put a fancy sort of K style badge over here. That is not something you can get through your Kia dealers. It's sort of an aftermarket only. Uh, there is a rumor that Kia, well, there's not a rumor. Kia has been said to be updating their logo. Uh, they've released sort of what it will basically look like on some of the concept cars. We have no logo information at all here in Canada. So um, there will be a new logo coming out for Kia according to all the magazines I've read, but according to Kia Canada, we are status quo for a while. So uh, there we go. Um, yeah, I think that answers some of your questions. Let me just see if there's anything else here. And if not, yeah, you can buy them online. Yeah, that's where you have to buy the, that K-Style logo. Um, don't buy the cheapest ones. We've had some people buy really cheapy ones and they start to peel. Um, obviously that's not something we can take care of for you. So there we go. 
I think we've covered everything. So my goal tomorrow is to have a stinger in here. It's been a while since we had a stinger. Uh, I particularly like the Stinger. I have a lot of history with the Stinger. When the Stinger was first launched in the States, uh, I was in LA doing a film shoot with Kia Motors USA, and uh, we did a, a couple YouTube videos with them. So uh, I've helped introduce that car to the North American market, and we want to talk about that car. We were supposed to do that today, it just didn't show up yet. So as long as it shows up, we're going to put it in here tomorrow, and uh, that'll be exciting. Next week, Friday, a week from tomorrow, we have a wedding here. Uh, the, what was supposed to be the wedding of the century, our boss's daughter was getting married next Friday. So um, a week from now, we'll probably do a little bit of a live stream uh, around the wedding party uh, when, it, when they swing by here because COVID times, weddings change. So that's sort of our plan for next Friday or tomorrow and then a week from now. And uh, you've got to announce when you come down to LA. I don't think I'll be back anytime soon. I'm staying out of your country for a while, no offense. I'm gonna stay right here and, and try to keep COVID free with just Kevin and I in a room socially distanced. All right, uh, that was fun. If I haven't earned your like, um, hopefully I can get it <laughs> right now. I didn't mean to insult anybody down there. I just, I feel very safe in my, my nice big office here that they made for me. And we started doing these videos during COVID times and I was able to sort of isolate with all of you in here. So uh, everything, <laughs> everything's fine down there, exactly. All right, so we're gonna head out. Hopefully I can earn your like, hopefully I can earn your subscription. Tomorrow's gonna be a fun video. I really like talking about the Stinger. Uh, we haven't had one in stock for a little while just because we weren't sure about inventory levels during COVID. Uh, we're bringing one back in. It's going to be fun. It's going to be bright red. It's going to look great. So we'll see you tomorrow live, I hope. I like Friday videos because uh, it's Friday. Friday's more fun. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow.